even though they didn't get the win last night, Paul George dropped the season high of 45 points against the Indiana Pacers. So we already know what we got to do. Get into these hidden highlights. Break down how Paul George's game looks so smooth. How he gets his buckets so easily. And why he's still an all-star caliber player despite what he's been through throughout his career. And so before we get to this video, make sure you subscribe, like, turn on the notifications. Hidden highlight, hidden highlight videos dropping daily. Ain't missing no days. All 2023 and forever and ever. And make sure you follow me on Twitch at PatDOR, same as YouTube. And let's get straight to it. Three seconds in last game. He hits a three. And that beat the record of Reggie Miller. So the Pacers have the two fastest threes or baskets to start a game. Paul George starts. Something all players can learn from, whether you play where you don't play with the coach, whatever it is, you don't got to always post the post entry. Last game, he hits a three. Now, Miles Turner, that beat the he could guard Zubach one on one in the post and probably get a stop because Miles Turner, a good defender and the good paint defender in or around the rim. So he could probably guard Zubach straight up and get that, but he's being active and just preventing this touch completely. So, what is Paul George going to do instead of trying to throw this pass over the top to where? Buddy right here would be able to pick that off. Doesn't force it. Sees the shot clock winding down. Attacks it on his own. Of Reggie Miller. So the Pacers have the two fastest threes or baskets to start a game. Paul George. Bucket just smooth. The game is so smooth, bro. People say it's like a 6'9 Kyrie. Yeah, that's one of his great strengths. It's not far off of a comparison because how skilled they are for their size, but. Feeding off of that game he played against the Cavs, but he's bringing some offense with him. Paul George. And then what I want you to notice as we watch all these clips, notice how many times Paul George is really moving at 100% speed or 90% speed, at full, full on attack mode, going as fast as he can. Notice how many times he does that, and notice how when he doesn't do that, because he does does that very, it's very rare that he does go that hard. Notice how he's able to change pace in and between all these moves. George has plenty of offense. He has five. I'm not sure they're prepared to do that. But they, mean, they got enough talent they can win a series. George goes inside. Ooh, even now. Ooh, Paul George still got some bounce, even though even, even though he broke that leg, he still got some bounce in there. But now, instead of using this bounce all the time, it's just selective. Very selective when he decides to use his bounce. Instead, he's, it's for for longevity purposes. Now, I'm going to show you a few more examples of, of how he's able to promote longevity in his game and by the way he plays. Two things on this play, man. Watch that first breakdown, though. Watch this first breakdown. Like I was telling you before, watch the pace. Watch the pace. Ooh. Quick, slow, quick, slow. Kicks it. Sees help. Canard, drive, kick. Now on this catch, you'll see a lot of coaches tell players, always, always catch the ball into your catch and shoot going, say if you're righty, go left, right. If you're lefty, go right, left. But if you could add being a righty and stepping right, left, or being a lefty and stepping left, right, you're going to have a lot more sh shots in your bag and a lot more ways to get cleaner looks. Because instead of trying to always get to that same footwork every time, you're able to shoot off these different footworks and it speeds up your shot just a little bit to prevent these, to prevent like a, a good contest or a good closeout. George for three. Pete, three, two. Bucky. I think he has seven threes on the night too. George guarded by McConnell. And the Pacers. Good D by McConnell. Good D by McConnell. People always talk about you can't hand check nowadays, but like if it's minimal, you'll see it happen every now and then. But it's sometimes it'll be very minimal. Won't have any impact really on the player, so the rest won't even call it. Or you're just like a Toronto who's super physical and just gonna hand check all game, and it's gonna make the refs not want to call every single hand check. So nine points for Benedict Matherin, seven in this quarter. Right, left again. Because if you wanted to get to that left, right, he's going to have to cross step this. In scenarios like this, moving towards the dominant hand, he's going to have to cross step that over. And it's going to be one, it's going to take a little longer to get up into your shot. And two, it's gonna, you're going to be a little more off balance because now you have to be able to get that cross step is just much harder than taking a one, two in the, mo in the momentum of where your body's going. George, Bucky. Three. 
And notice how good he is at playing off the spot, at playing off the catch. A lot of people want to talk about his handle, but he gets a lot of buckets off the catch, too. He knows how to play off the ball. Setting up these screens. Ooh, footwork. Bucket. Notice that footwork. That's that's Kobe. MJ footwork right there. That pirouette. It's not just a post. It's not just a post footwork. You can do it anywhere on the court. Hop, split. Might have just traveled a little bit, but we're gonna forget about it. George raises up again. Serious work here. Turner in the lane. Yeah, it's now a PG shot and be a tweaking for this one. He's gonna be more of a score. That's what I think. But I understand your point. I think it's a valid point. I'm telling you, just, you see a lot of these great scorers have controlled. They go When they go downhill, they go as fast as they can while staying controlled. They go as fast as he can while staying controlled. Notice that. And it's not even just about driving. It's about when you play basketball in general. You go as fast as you can as you can stay controlled. There's going to be more examples of this later. You know, six rebounds, but I'm not sure he's going to get that many. Pretty good leverage there by Miles, wasn't it, Quinn? It is. It just, his game is just different. Now the problem with this top guard, he got this. He got an easy bucket. Pretty yep. Good leverage there. But look at the way the Pacers are set up. Because now, if Neesmith Smith is going to top guard PG, he's going to need some help from somewhere. This help is not going to come from the strong side, of course, because you got Buddy right here, Halliburton over here. There's nobody, and even if it's on the strong side, you're not coming all the way over here right here to help. So the help right here needs to come from Miles Turner. Miles Turner, because Zubac is not is a non-threat. Turner needs to be able to at least drop a little bit, show hands just to discourage that pass from going through. Just to discourage that pass. And now if, if Paul George wants to try to set this up and get away, now it's gonna be it's gonna be up to Buddy Hill and Marcus Morris on this to maybe switch this, or he's gonna just continue to chase over the top. And but if the Clippers are gonna counter this, now it's gonna be Morris coming over the top of the screen with Buddy Hill chasing over. Then that's a shot for the Pacers. You got to also, or a shot for the Clippers. You got to be able to see both sides and be able to read the ball. So, like, if you do one thing, know you're going to give something else up, but also realize how you'll be able to recover and be able to fix all these different, these different counters to play. So, this ultimately should be able to work in the Clippers' favor. Mal, if, if Turner, Turner tags, boom, Marcus Morris goes over the top, be able to curl this tight, boom, shot, shot right here from the mid range because Turner's already in a drop. So, long story short, they just had bad, a bad defensive coverage for how Neesmith was guarding PG. George for three. Missed that one. Tip. George. Relocating. Always got to make sure when your teammate drives, just make sure that you're visible. Make sure that they could see you. Not that only you could see them. But they can see you. Because if they can't see you, they won't be able to make that pass. So all because you can see them from a certain spot doesn't mean they can see you. Paul George, George. just down to the corner. Makes himself available. Knocks down the three. Great player off the catch. Off the spot up. A lot of people don't talk about it though. Watch the pace. So smooth, bro. So smooth, man. A lot of people think, oh, when you get into your pickups, you got to pick the ball up quick, shoot the ball quick, so you get the ball up as quick as you can before the defender can get their hand up as quick as possible and get a contest. No. Because if because if you're really in control of your own pace, the defender will move at your pace. They'll move at your pace. So now what you're doing is moving at your own pace, but doing things as fast as you can in certain situations like pickups, driving downhill, but as controlled as you can. So you're going to be able to get the best shot off as possible and make the best read possible. PG, smooth pickup. All controlled the whole time. Because if he tries to go too fast, that touch is not going to be the same. It's not going to be as smooth. George over Neesmith. Neesmith was getting cooked, not even going to lie. Neesmith was getting a lot of buckets handed to him last night. That was a long night for Neesmith, bro. Again, another way, like I told you before, how he's promoting his longevity instead of using his balance all the time, going for contact. So now he could get the same angles that he was able before to the rim by jumping over people or whatever. He's just doing that now, but without having to jump over people, take all these landings and whatnot. Now he uses that veer step, 
good and end up ends up going right right slows down bumps and bumps turner great shot blocker too bumps turner right right late george against his former teammate turner Oh, they were teammates for a little while. I ain't Loki forgot about that. Now Loki forgot he was even in Indiana. Down. I just forgot he was even in Indiana, bro. Time be flying. Time be flying, bro. It's already 2023. Even on his breakdowns. Even on all his breakdowns. Watch it. Watch the pace. Watch the stutters. Watch the shiftiness. Change direction. Boom. Sharp angle change. Now he attacks this angle. Instead of trying to just go straight, he attacks the gap that he now created by hitting that pull, hitting that uh, snatch back. Good hands by Halliburton. If Halliburton can improve his on-ball defense and then mix that in with his off-ball defense and how he's able to get steals and his anticipation, he'd be a, he'd be a two-way player. And it's not even just guarding, about guarding guards, but even be able to guard some bigger wings too. But I, I, we can do that for a different video. God damn. We got Knee Smith grabbing his knee. Just the real Knee Smith. <laughs> Lucky he break that though. I'm pretty sure he tripped. We don't want no crazy crossover. Playing off the catch. Playing off the catch, bro. I'm telling you. I don't care if you're the number one scorer on the team. Two, three, four, five. If you're the defender, if you're the playmaker. In today's game, you've got to be able to play off the catch. You've got to be able to play off the catch. Because if not, that amount of court time that you're going to be able to see is going to, it's going to drop. Because nowadays, people, instead of seeing the game as, oh, you got to be able to get stops and you got to be able to get and maybe get some easy buckets, it's now your buckets will be able to help you get stops. Your buckets is a way to fuel your defense. So notice what I'm saying. You can't just be a player on one side of the floor. You can't be a specialty at one thing. You got to, if you're, if you're good at one thing, got to, aside from shooting, you got to at least have some sort of shooting. Just make sure you add that to your game. I don't care who you is, what level you play at, where, what, 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 what people think of you, how you play. You got to add that to your game. Thank you. Misses that, but just four seconds left. George it's tough though. They already lost this one to the Pacers. <laughs> buzzer beater. <laughs> wow. Three at the buzzer to cut the game from 131 to from 131-127 to 130-131. No difference, bro. I still took the L, but and in this video, Paul George game smooth, pace immaculate. That's how he's make, able to make the game look so easy. And a good question, too. Who would you have in a 1v1? Paul George or Jalen Brown? I think that would be some great ones. Best of three. Games to, games to seven. All ones. Three dribbles. That would be a great game to see. That's very interesting. I would, I would, I would, I would pay to see that low key. Actually, no. Nah, I wouldn't pay to see that. But I actually want to see that though. But that's the end of this video. Paul George hitting highlights. Make sure you subscribe. Like, turn on the notifications. Follow me on Twitch. Pat D-O-R. Videos dropping daily, and we out of here.